I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Commander Cory Shepard headed to the Artemis Tau Cluster to see if we could find the Prothean expert and daughter of Matriarch Benezia, Liara Tassoni. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missledyne Online in our Insanity playthrough, premiering new episodes every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so that you know when we are premiering new episodes. In today's episode of Mass Effect, I am hungover. And we'll finish what we're doing and rescue Liara to Sony and have one of the hardest battles that we'll have ever have on Insanity Difficulty. And I'm sure, I'm sure that this isn't going to go poorly at all. And I'm probably just going to one-shot the whole thing. Let's be honest. Anyways, let's get into it. Commander Corey Shepard. We also, in the last episode, showed off our new friend, Renegade Shepard. Uh, who is, of course, no relation to Commander Corey Shepard here. They just have, they, they just happen to share the same name. Uh, also, I want to point out that there's some enemies. As soon as we progress a little bit further, you'll see them kind of hanging out over here. Watch out, because there is a rocket trooper over here. I think we can actually, you know what? You know, let's get, you want to get a little spicy here? Watch this, watch this. Ready? Ready? Because we can do this now. Boom. What is that? They hit me. That's what that is. You take out. You, you got a problem here? Nah, dude. You can just snipe everybody. Man, you know, a lot of these changes that they've made have probably made the game a little bit too easy. Anyways, we're, we're going to head down there. We're going to we're gonna fist to cuffs. I just want to point out, though, that poor Liara. So it doesn't seem like Liara is working at all with uh with matriarch benezia she said that they are they're not the same and they don't they don't really get along and they don't talk anymore so i want to point that out let's see if we can get our tally and i'm gonna go ahead and use a pop of medi there there's also the mining laser control sitting here which i want to talk a little bit about because there's actually something kind of neat that we can do so there's a guest sniper here i'm gonna go ahead and toss him perfect and let's go ahead and overload this and overload again and pop barrier because, uh, well, I don't want to die. Goodbye, Geth Shock Trooper. No, 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 no. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. That was a little spicy. You guys, you guys didn't see that. That wasn't. Hello, Geth Shock Trooper. That, that actually hit me uh, a lot, a lot, a lot faster than I thought it would. Go ahead and pop warp here. Easy. Easy. Peasy, lemon squeezy. We took them all down. Now, there is that mining laser over there that we have to use. Uh, but there is actually a trick with that laser that we uh, all talk about. I'm not going to use it entirely, but I do want to talk about it. Now, we can use this here, this little storage container. And get some free stuff and some free XP, which, you know, it's me. I need it. I want it. We're going to get that. Chemical rounds is not a bad upgrade. That is for sure. And we have another one, actually, sitting in this little bunker tent thing. See if we get anything good from this weapons upgrade, because I actually do need some new gear. Tell you what. We got an Edge 2. We know that's bad. The Striker 2, which is actually pretty good in the Reaper 2. I'll take all those. 31 XP. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. This case place is a little spooky. You know what I mean? It's a little, it's a, it's a little spooky. So if we come over here, we'll see that there is this mining laser control, and you can enter the code if you so choose. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this for just a second. Do one little pass around, make sure we got everything. So before we do anything with this, I recommend saving. In case you decide that you don't want to do this, which we're not going to worry about this too much. But in the original Mass Effect, and from what I've heard, potentially in this one too, you can actually kind of glitch the game and get pretty much infinite XP. So all you want to do is this. So we use the laser control like we have to do anyways. Looks like the first button we could hit is X, square, circle, triangle, X, square, circle, triangle, X. Nope. There we go. And we'll fire the mining laser, which gives us the opportunity to go help our friend. 
But now what we can do, we just pop that. We can go ahead and actually save the game here. And then load the game. And we just got more experience. Now what you would do is you would save again over what you just did. And load again. And you get it again. And then you save and you do it again. And you can actually keep doing this to max out your level in the very first world. If that is something that you want to do. And there you go. You level up. The way that the XP works here as well is it actually scales according to your level. So you get more XP the higher level you are. So you can keep doing this at nauseum. And it should take you... If you were to level all the way to the max level, I'd say probably about five hours of doing just this, uh, which is, you know, not that, it's, it's not that bad uh, if you really need the XP. So you'll see there that we actually got 273 XP where before we were getting about 237. So it does obviously grow as you level up. Now, this is something that I don't really recommend doing this. Obviously, it's a glitch, and I don't really like doing glitches personally. Uh, it's not it's not really for me. So we're going to go ahead and load the save from before we did the uh, the glitch. So I will get a little XP because uh, I'm, you know, loading the save. Uh, but, you know, it's not... It is something to consider doing if you are uh, in a rough spot. If the fight coming up is just kicking your butt a little too hard you can always come back and and try to see if you can do that in fact i don't know if you guys noticed but i actually just got xp and i didn't even use the mining laser yet so let me save right here and i'll show you guys that that actually works without even using the mining laser you just defeat those enemies and then pop in and for whatever reason we're we're getting credit yep super super strange that that's a thing but hey it is i do recommend having a save here in case for whatever reason you can't max out your character um you do want to be able to do that at some point so we're gonna see what we can do easy get that mining laser and let's continue with the story that is a very cool glitch and it is definitely something that i wanted to show you in case you do want to abuse it it's a single player game to each their own we're gonna head down here and use this right here which hopefully will allow us to appear on the other side and release liara to sony out of her bubble my one of my favorite characters in all of mass effect just chilling right behind us here gosh i love you oh how did you get in here i didn't think there was any way past the barrier uh mining laser we have to get you out of here before more geth arrive yes you're right i've seen enough of them to last a lifetime that button should shut down my containment field this one right here and she explodes. Uh. Hi. Hi, Liara. Oh my god, hello. Any idea how we get out of this place? I love you so much. There is an elevator back in the center of the tower. At least I, I think it's an elevator. It should take us out of here. Come on. I, I still cannot believe all this. Why would the Geth come after me? Do you think Benezia is involved? Saren's looking for the conduit. Think fast, Miss Prothean expert. The conduit, but I don't know. Ashley's so rude. She's so rude. Look at her what eyes. What the hell was that? These ruins are not stable. That mining laser must have triggered a seismic event. My bad. We have to hurry. The whole place is caving in. Oh, we're getting out of here. Joker. Get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal. On the double, mister. Aye, aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA, eight minutes. You have five. He needs to move faster. All right. Eight minutes. So what do we do for eight minutes? You guys want to... Like, the four of us want to hang out? We can play Uno. And we'll get an auto save real quick. And guess what? Oh, they added so much cover now, friends. Surrender. Or don't. That would be more fun. 
And we got the soldier ally trophy for having Ashley in our party for five missions. See how quickly you get those trophies. So that means that we can now rotate her out and put somebody else in. Hey, the ruin's in coming case down. In you didn't notice, this place is falling apart. Exhilarating, isn't it? Thanks for getting rid of those energy fields for us. Hand the doctor over. Nope. Whatever it is you want, you are not getting it from me. She'll stay with us, thanks. Not an option. Saren wants her, and he always gets what he wants. <laughs> That's cute. Kill them. Spare the Asari if you can. Not, doesn't matter. And welcome to one of the hardest battles we will have here in Mass Effect Leg uh, Legendary Edition Insanity. This is a very hard fight. We're going to go ahead and use this to make sure our friends are safe. And also, if you haven't yet, we're going to put some points into our stuff here because it's going to be useful. We have lift that we can do, uh, but we can also have throw. We don't have to put any points into throw right now. It actually will work against this Krogan, so let's not worry too much about that. But let's go ahead and make sure that we have access to stasis because that is going to be very useful for us. And we are also going to go ahead and put a point into lift. Lift is not going to work on the Krogan just yet, so keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and spend a couple points in there. I'm going to save points just in case I need to put them into charm. And here we are going to put some points into her assault training. In fact, you know what? We should probably just do all of that. And then a point into her combat armor. So Ashley's assault training is at, is full. And now we are going to do Tally Zora Naraya, who's going to get a bunch of hacking here so that she can go ahead and uh, hopefully get a few more a few more of those shock troopers on our side and then we'll just make sure that her electronics is as high as it can be so she has nice juicy shields and we have a rocket trooper here we're gonna see if we can use her overload and mine as well almost dead pop goes the weasel and then we have a Krogan battle master this guy right here is going to be a pain in the ass uh somehow we're some something's happening here i'm a little confused we're absolutely shrekking him guys i hang on real quick before you have to, we haven't used the experience glitch i don't know what i don't what i'm confused Go ahead and throw this shock trooper. And uh, why don't you go ahead and AI hack this one? There you go. That one's going to start hitting the sniper. It actually took out the sniper. Oh, hey. That's not good. I'm going to bury her here. Whoa. Jeez, Louise. Hey, why don't you get out of here? Let's, uh, why don't we just lift you up? Oh, no. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Woo! All right. I'm gonna put him, I don't know what happened there. I'm going to go ahead and put him in a stasis. Good thing we picked that up, huh? That would have been embarrassing to lose there. We'll go ahead and warp him and sabotage as well. Woo! We did it! I, I um... I don't... I don't know what happened there, folks. That Krogan Battlemaster used to be... They must have nerfed that guy hard. Oh, no! Go team, go! Whew. Glad we got out of there. We should probably keep moving though in case, you know, it, 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 come, it you know, it can keep. So real quick before we move on, uh, because we absolutely decimated that fight, 
I want to show you my loadout right now and uh, why we were able to do that because that I was not expecting that. And really, the reason why we were able to shred through that Krogan is because of Tally's phasic rounds that she actually has equipped. Those do a ton of damage to shields, and that's the strong part of the Krogan. So once she took part of the shields, then we had Ashley come in with chemical rounds that applies toxic damage that kind of negates the health regeneration that Krogans get. And we were able to do a massive amount of damage with that. So that is awesome. And of course, we had some other stuff on our armor, but that's actually not the important part at all. It's the fact that we had those characters that were able to shred and of course on our on our own uh, shepherd we also had shield battery so that we had the best shield we could get not that that uh, even mattered in that fight to be honest with you it was our pistol so we had tally and then we we ourselves had anti-personnel rounds which does more or damage against or organics and we had heat sink so we were able to fire our pistol more but that's why you saw that our pistol was just absolutely shredding these guys. 20% damage versus organics. We chewed through that Krogan. Anyways, back to it. Too close, Commander. Search and rescue. would have been swimming in molten sulfur. Oh, see, there the you go. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. Just for future reference. We almost died out there, and your pilot is making jokes? Yeah, he's... He Joker pulled it. our asses out of there. I think he's earned the right to a few bad jokes. I see. It must be a human thing. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there, and not just from the volcano. Those geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. I'm sorry, 50 years? Just how old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn. I hope I look that good when I'm your age. What? A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours. But among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. I think I might know what happened to them. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. I think that's but exactly right. But here's the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. Mm, how do you know Where'd this? Where'd you come up with this theory? I thought there wasn't any evidence. I have been working on this for 50 years. I have tracked down every scrap and shred of evidence. Eventually, subtle patterns start to emerge patterns that hint at the truth it is difficult to explain to someone else i cannot point to one specific thing to prove my case it is more a feeling derived from a half century of dedicated research but i know i'm right and eventually i will be able to prove it there were other civilizations before the protheans this cycle has repeated itself many times over who came before them if the protheans weren't the first then who was I don't know. There is barely any evidence on the Protheans, even less on those who came before them. I cannot prove my theory, but I know I am right. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays and the citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. I think I can help you. They were wiped out by a race of sentient machines, the Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? Uh, there was this beacon, and it exploded, and I saw some stuff. 
There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Visions? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. Tell me about it. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. A lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. Are you flirting? This isn't helping us find Saren, or the Conduit. Don't get jealous, Caden. Of course, Kaden. you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit, or Saren. I think you can still help us. I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Thank you, Commander. Saren might come after me again. I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship. And my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later on. And her biotics will come in handy when the fighting starts. you damn right they will, Rex. Welcome aboard. Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate or slept? Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Protheans' true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? Yeah, but let's talk later. We can talk again after you've seen the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? So you can actually just renegade this and be like, you know what, F the council. Or you can, you can, well, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Batch them through, Joker. Setting up the link now, You can now, batch Commander. them through and then just, and then just We've not say anything. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Liara is on our side. The Geth were trying to kill her. Benezia would never allow Saren to kill her daughter. I don't know about that. Maybe she doesn't know. Or maybe we don't know her. We never expected she could become a traitor. At least the mission was a success. Apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin. Was that really necessary, Shepard? Uh, yeah. The Geth were crawling all over those ruins. We were lucky to make it out alive. Of course, Commander. The mission must always take priority. Good luck, Commander. Remember, we are all counting on you. Thank you. Great, great to, uh, great to meet you guys and, uh, and talk just one-on-one. -on -one. It was nice. It was really nice. Anyways, we, uh, we have two more points that I didn't spend yet. Thought I would point that out. But we're back on the Normandy after a major mission. One of three big ones that we could do right now is done. And I recommend after any major mission. Yes, Commander. That you come and talk to, uh, people Speak around. Please. I trust you, Commander. Yes, ma'am. Presley, of course, doesn't add anything new to the conversation, but we now have a points defense systems that we can examine here for a codex entry and 36 experience, which is nice. And we also have over here a heat load monitor that we can examine and another one here that we can examine. So that's 72 XP for doing pretty much nothing. I'd love to see it. And we can, oh, I want to look outside. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go, there, right here. Thank you. Another codex entry, 36 XP. You can talk to Joker if you I want. I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. Sure you want that. If we present you with a medal, you'll end up sitting on stage listening to politicians make speeches for a couple of hours. That's a good point. They'd probably make me shave, too. I spent the last seven weeks working on this, baby. No medal's worth that. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? I have here? to go. Hey, you, don't, you don't have anything new to say except for, except for the, you know, checking in thing, which is, which is worth it. Anyways, I love that guy. It's just anytime you can talk to Seth Gray Joker, uh, I'm into it. Love that. Love him. Anyways, I just want to point out that there's no new codex entries in here, but it is worth checking because those codex entries do just pop up uh, randomly. Well, not randomly, but after after certain missions, you'll suddenly have a codex that wasn't there before that you can now discover. It is worth doing that because, of course, we are going for trophies and a completionist run and all of that, and we want to make sure we talk to as many people as possible. 
We also can go ahead and use our locker here to get a Banshee level four assault rifle, cryo explosive, and a new pistol, the Edge 3, which actually, finally, might be better than what we've been using, and it is not really. Okay, whatever, fine. Hey, Kaden, how you doing, bud? Commander, do you have a minute? Uh, yeah. I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get back up from the council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. It's funny, we finally get out here, and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. <laughs> Cute way to look well, at it. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid, where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves, or... You know, for justice. Maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain cam. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance. Training. Brain cam. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Nah, that's fine. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain cam. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Accidental. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics. A little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. What's Jump Zero? Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades, right on the termination shot outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. Friends? There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do though. It was a research platform then and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Hmm. Time to talk then? Then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bull every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell beautiful but not stuck up about it like you i guess bam hey slow down buddy sounds like she was special to you she was maybe she felt the same but things never felt together training you know yeah yeah you know of any intention you know i think kaden's a little certain? thirsty for us no one knows doesn't mean they didn't happen as big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Interesting. When I was there. Jump Zero is a long way from home. Continuing the Jump Zero that? talk. The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the bits. Anyway, 
This was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. Nah, no, listen, I'm interested. I wanted to get to know you a little better. That's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well, you're welcome, man. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? To some degree. Of course. But I don't enjoy it with everyone. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah, I'd like that. Alright, but hey, wait. I'm not. We're not. I'm just, we're just talking, dude. I, take, uh, relax. I, not, you know? Jeez. It's like, I'm your commanding officer. You can't, that's not, that, you don't, you know? You don't do, you don't do that. It's bad. Anyways, let's head into Shakwa's area and see if we can maybe talk to a certain Liara, maybe sitting around somewhere. Yes, Commander. Do you have anything? Is there something nah, we, we should go. we're good on conversations Goodbye, here with Shakwa's. But uh, Liara, oh, you're hanging out back here. Let's talk. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? Um, I was worried. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. Yeah, she's the best. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... Oh, don't mention it. I'm just it. glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. You know what? I believe you. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. I'd like to talk about you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. Wrong. I spend most of my time on remote digs. Unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes, I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes I just need to get away from other people. Why is that? You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. I mean, all why children not? rebel against their parents. It's a natural part of growing up. Uh -huh. You share the wisdom of the matriarch, Shepard. That is exactly what Benezia said when I told her of my decision. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. You think I'm fascinating? Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No, I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> Relax. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess. How could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. Yeah, it was a little embarrassing for you, wasn't it? Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. You sound troubled. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. Hmm. 
I'd like to know more about the Asari. One we of were the, the coolest first species, species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Rumors? Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Whoa. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term. Not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. That is so cool. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Who was your dad? Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Uh, you can do that? I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered space flight and left our homeworld. Uh. Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Oh, you don't know that. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. How did they deal with that? Few Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapien species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. That's beautiful. Anyways, that's all that we can learn. I should go. For now, from Liara. Goodbye, Shepard. Thank you so much for talking to us. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Nothing important. I just wanted to talk. Of course, Shepard. What did you want to talk about? Just how I much I go. love you. I mean... Goodbye, Shepard. Bye. So we got to learn a lot about Asari physiology and this union thing and the fact that they're monogendered, which is super cool. I love... Uh, the Asari is one of my favorite, like, fleshed out species in the Mass Effect universe. I just think it's so cool. Anyways, see if Garrus has anything for us now. Come in. How are you? You and C-Sec. Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? It's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like? Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. Yeah, I can see that. That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. 
My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Sarah. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger for the same reasons. Oh man, Garrus would be such a good Spectre. You were asked to be a Spectre. Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. That's all right. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, c sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Not entirely Just true. because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. I see what you mean, but I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. So one of the cool things about Garrus is every time that you talk to him, you can actually kind of shape how Garrus is going to act, whether Garrus is going to be a renegade or a paragon. Uh, you, Commander, kind of get to see, kind of get to choose that, which I think is super cool. He's the only character that you really get to dictate uh, their personality and, and how they feel. So we can talk to Ashley, Commander. How are we doing? What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? I believe her. I think she's being straight with us. Or at least I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Hey, want me to ask her about her sex life? Might be illuminating. Um, don't be cruel. I don't think she's used to teasing, good natured or otherwise. No fun, Commander. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Yeah, can we talk? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. Of course. What do you got? I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander. Should they have full access to the ship? Or because they're not Alliance? They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies. At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust aliens? You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We... Humanity, I mean... We have to learn to rely on ourselves. Mm, we need allies. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. Mm. You got a pessimistic view of the universe, Williams. A pessimist is what an optimist calls a realist. Look. If you're fighting a bear, and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. I would not do that. It's not racism, not really. No, it is. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. Nope, oh, it's, that's pretty they much. seem like deeply much. held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. Huh. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, ma'am. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. You deserve better, That's Williams. Off. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. So why isn't she working on the fleet? Because obviously there's a reason for that. You're lucky. I lost my family on Mindoir. Are you related to anyone I'd have heard of? Couldn't say, Commander. I read about Mindoir. The Alliance screwed the pooch on that one. Should have had a bigger garrison. Is that why you're out here? To take the fight to the pirates? Uh, no, actually. It's to see space. No. The future of humanity is out here. There's so much we haven't seen yet. Yeah. I still remember my first field exercise on Titan. When we hit mud, the reality hit me. I'm the first person who ever stood here. 
Then my drill instructor kicked me in the ass. I went face first into the muck. He spent the next five minutes chewing me out for gold bricking. What's gold bricking? Don't tell me you had Gunny Ellison. <laughs> He's the only one who uses that word to describe shirking duty. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. You went to the Makapog boot camp, too? Yeah. Gunny Ellison's still reaming out recruits down there, kicking ass and using words like inveigle and pusillanimous. <laughs> what a gross word. All right, I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams, but this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. And uh, maybe, you it know. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. Thanks. I don't think kissing Turians will be necessary. You never know, Commander. Hey, maybe Dismissed maybe you and Garrus, Ashley. Ma'am. Maybe that'll get you to not be such a jerk face. Hey, Rex, how you doing? So, we've got Saren on the run. Yes, we do, sir. Yes, we it do. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten to the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. You knew him? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. Okay. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. Wait, Saren recruited Rex? I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What was he doing? What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship watching a couple of the mercs called him by name but he never spoke to them never spoke to anyone i had a really bad feeling about him so i got the hell out didn't even wait to get paid whoa dude what kind of cargo was the freighter carrying what was saren after i don't know all I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. I wonder why he would have... Whose ship was it? That's important. There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. Hmm. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Wow. Okay. So long, Rex. Shepard. Thanks for the chat. Good to know that, uh... I mean, I kinda, kinda knew, but... Rex has worked with Saren in the past. Maybe Ashley's right to be a little distrustful. We have another thing that we can examine here for another codex in 36th century. Something I can do for you, Commander. And I don't think there's anything Carry on, from Adam's, Adams, side. but hey, maybe Tally's got something for oh. us. Hello, Shepard. Uh, you sound down. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? It's too quiet to sleep. The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just the silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. 
Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Because you're homesick. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. Ain't that the truth? That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. But you're going back, right? You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. That's absolutely right. I should go. See you later. So, definitely recommend talking to all of your squad. That's super, super important as you progress through the game. Every time you do one of these major missions or assignments, come back, talk to them, see what's going on. It's the only way that you're going to be able to build relationships, get those Paramore trophies for falling in love. But we got everything that we can get right now from our friends. We've talked to Caden, Ashley, Rex, Garrus, Liara, and Tally. And now... We really only have one more thing that we can do, which is to use the galaxy map and return to the Citadel, where we will be doing every single side quest now that we have our full squad. We should be able to knock out all of the allied trophies in the very next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Dine Online. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you, and I love hanging out in the chat with you guys. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, and I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode. I cannot believe that that Krogan Battlemaster fight was so flippin' easy. I, I'm shocked. That fight used to be insane. I think the addition of all the new cover that they added to that platform, they definitely rebalanced that fight because it was... I was worried about it. And uh, it was the it was easy peasy lemon squeezy. But I'm so excited to have a full squad, and I'm excited to get these side quests done and fill out this universe just a little bit more. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, never give up, never surrender to the Krogan Battlemaster. Bye everyone.